We're at workshops in France that brings artists together to paint, to talk, and to share. And we are at the Chateau de la Lubière, and we're in the Luberon, beautiful Luberon part of Provence. I happen to believe that art really encompasses both sides of the brain. I find there's a tremendous amount of science and intellectual part in art, but also the artistic part. For me personally, that's part of my attraction to it, is that I find it maximally intellectually stimulating. I feel I'm firing on all cylinders uh, when painting. I used to be a pediatrician and decided to do something different when I was an empty nester. Instead of returning to the practice of medicine after a 17-year absence, I decided to follow my heart and uh, see what all of this yearning for art making was about. I grew up uh, for the first nine years of my life in New Jersey, um, and then after that in Nice, France, and also Villefranche-sur-Mer uh, during the rest of my childhood and also my teen years. The current show that I call A Passion for Provence, I try to have a certain number of landscapes, a certain number of seascapes, and then also I love what I call bateaux, or um, little wooden boats that are unfortunately a vanishing species in southern France. I find that there's an unearthly beauty to Provence, and also a simplicity of life that I find very appealing. As you drive through these incredible vistas, you can look into the fields and see the vegetables that you're gonna be eating later for dinner. Or if you're down by the sea, you see the fishermen who are getting the fish that you might be eating for lunch tomorrow, along with the unbelievable profusion of colors, um, just quiet, beautiful landscapes. I find that there's a few locations that really feed inspiration and that I feel immensely drawn to. One is um, the Renoir Museum, because I played there as a kid climbing all the olive trees, getting in trouble playing war games. Uh, and this is why my mother plein air painted with another artist. And a second shrine of sorts is uh, in Saint-Rémy-de-Provence, and it's uh, the psychiatric hospital, actually, where Van Gogh spent a year. I'm paying a tremendous amount of attention to the composition. I'm trying to use science in terms of allowing the viewer to be attracted from across the room to the painting by using really strong light dark contrast. I'm using a lot of color theory as used by the impressionist. In terms of brushwork, I will never forget learning about impressionist art from actually one of the masters that I studied briefly with uh, said that impressionists explore edges and that set me into this frenzy of search about edges, and I have fully embraced that. It allows uh, one to create a sense of depth, but also to help the viewer move around the painting, and it also feeds into showing what's important and what is not. With Impressionist art, or rather with a softer edge, I'm gonna give an A for coloring past the line. As a matter of fact, wildly past the line. And that's just another tool that has great power and significance to show distance and also to help the viewer decide what's important and what's not important. There is a, an adage in medical school that says, see one, do one, teach one. Terrifying in medicine, <laughs> if you really think about that. But uh, I think it really works well for teaching. Teaching is a passion uh, for that reason. 
I feel it's a privilege to be on other people's art journey. I feel it's a privilege to be able to have a community in which to paint and to cheer other people on. And it's something that I try to also um, create around my studio and also with the other people uh, whose art journey I'm sharing on. I grew up in this enchanted paradise that has inspired many artists. How can I be insensitive to what this magical place has to offer? So I painted on canvas to remember it myself, but also to bring it to others. I would like to share some key techniques that I'm using in the works that you've just seen and some favorite brush strokes. The lay it down and leave it alone brush stroke. Throughout the body of work of many of the French Impressionists, one sees these short, bold, textured, luscious strokes. I like to call them the lay it down and leave it alone brush stroke because it's a step by step of what we need to do to achieve it. The key to this brush stroke is loading your brush fully and then stopping the brush stroke before the point at which the stroke becomes irregular. Let's watch as the master of masters performs this brush stroke.
parallel brush strokes. Many works by Cezanne and Van Gogh feature brush strokes that are lined up next to each other, all brush strokes going in a similar direction. I call these brush strokes parallel brush strokes. My reasons for adopting this French Impressionist technique is that it does three things that I like. On one hand, it confers a sense of movement to the painting. All of those parallel and concentric lines create an energy that feels like movement. The second reason is that it helps describe the form. If I was applying these strokes to an apple, I would lay them down in the direction of the planes of the apple in a rounded way to suggest the contour. And finally, it is possible to make very subtle color variations as you move from parallel stroke to parallel stroke. I believe this confers a richness of color and texture, much like a beautiful tapestry. Distressing. A vintage piece of furniture is felt to be more expensive than one that is raw wood direct from the factory. Its value comes from the workmanship, which really comes down to dents and dings that have been filled with different stains. In much the same way, the surface of a painting can be distressed, and in the view of some, made better and more interesting by those dents and dings. In this image, there are scratch marks made with the wooden end of my paintbrush to disrupt the lines of the bush. On the right side of the bush, there are some pinkish vertical lines that seem to come out of the bush. Those are also intentional distress marks to disrupt the line of the bush. Kid piles from a mother color. If I create a mother color, in other words, the average color, and I pull off about four or five little satellite kid piles, and I change the color of each satellite kid pile just a hair. One can be lighter, one can be darker, one can be higher chroma, one can be lower chroma, one can have a little yellow in it, another one can have a little purple in it. I wind up with a rich array of colors that are closely related to the mother color. There is a richness and subtlety of color that comes from using this technique, which is as simple as sticking your brush in one of the kid piles, doing three or four lay it down and leave it alone strokes, and then moving on to another kid pile and using that color for the next few lay it down and leave it alone strokes.
Thank you for watching and happy painting.